Oh, boxing fans, right now I'm talking Bernard Hopkins versus Badchad Dawson. This is my rematch prediction. Okay, and this, is, like I said, is the rematch. The last fight ending in a controversial circumstances with Hopkins hurting his shoulder after being thrown to the deck, brushed off the back of Bad Chad Dawson like he was a piece of dirt, whoosh, on the floor, resulting in Hopkins claiming he had a dislocated collarbone. If it was, who knows? Well, let's fast forward through all the bureaucracy. Biop's got his belt back. The collarbone is back in place. People claim there's evidence in form of x-rays, you know, of the injury. Yet there's also evidence of David Hay having an injury against um, Vladimir Klitschko in there. In the first time their fight was supposed to come around when Satanta went tits up. And you know, what else is there? Don't forget stuff like George Groves having an injury <laughs> against both Anderson and Stieglitz. Evidence of that too. So... Take that with a pinch of salt, guys. Yeah, we all know the man with the most money can have anything manufactured up. That's, that's the reality of this, including x-rays. The rematch has been signed, and soon it's going to be delivered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so looking at their attributes right now, what, what have we got? Height and reach apparently is the same, except when I was looking at them fighting, Bad Chad Dawson was extremely bigger extremely big. He looked a lot taller on fight night, maybe because Hopkins was crouched in a bit, maybe because he was lying on the floor, rolling around in pain, who knows. And I thought he had the better reach, I'm not going to lie. Power at this time is going to be with Bad Chad Dawson. He's the natural light heavyweight and obviously Bernard Hopkins is the natural middleweight. Moved up 40 odd years old. Not looking good for the man. Speed over the distance and in bursts, I think, is both with Bad Chad Dawson. However, in his old age, B-Hop is no slouch. You can get hit by the guy. Movements clearly with Dawson, you know. I think Bernard Hopkins is going to have to be exactly on his game, on his movement, in order to counteract Dawson's forward coming movement. Boxing ability is probably a toss-up, you know. In terms of fair boxing ability, Dawson probably has the slight advantage, but Bernard Hopkins is a brilliant boxer, and with his experience and the fact he knows how to use his dirty tactics to the fullest, he probably has the, well he has an advantage there, it's not a good one to proclaim but it still is an advantage. Experience is definitely with B-Hop, he's been there, seen it, done it, he's the dirtiest player in the game. He's the Luis Suarez of boxing, take it how you want that guys. Um, chin, neither of these guys got a bad chin, but I expect Dawson to work B-Hop's chin a lot more. Plus, when you're a lot older, you take a lot more punches, your chin's going to be a bit worse. Punch output is severely in favour of Bad Chad Dawson by a country mile. You know, B-Hop has to fight in bursts now, he has to keep the, the uh, rounds close, throw a quick combination and hope something lands in that. If that lands, he usually wins the rounds. If it doesn't land, you know, it, he expends energy and he probably ends up losing the round. That's, how it, that's a lot. Of what happened in the Calzaghi fight, he got out punched, out fought. You know, a lot of it was like that. And in the first, in the first fight, I had Dawson win in the first fight, so that's what I thought about that. Stamina, yeah, we got that one severely with Dawson, also in a country mile. Mentally, I don't think, I don't think that Bihoff wants to fight Bad Chad Dawson again. I don't think he wants to fight him in the first place. So I think that B Dawson has got the advantage there. Plus, he got his belt taken away from him controversially. It makes for a good fight, really. The form book, well, more recently, Pascal beat Dawson. B-Hop beat Pascal. Dawson was beating B-Hop before the injury. Form book's gone out the window, guys. Form book literally has gone out the window. And now what I expect in this fight, okay. I expect a young, hungry, busier boxer in Bad Chad Dawson, who already knows he can beat B-Hop. He was doing it in the previous fight. At this age, B-Hop he cannot compete with Dawson. Ten years ago, yeah, B-Hop would have beat Dawson, in my opinion. But right now, no. I don't think he's got half of the stuff he needs to beat B-Hop any uh, Dawson, sorry, anymore. And I also think he took the easy way out of the previous fight, which almost backfired on him until Golden Boy Promotions went around and got the belts back. I think that Chad Dawson's going to try and set a very high tempo in this in the 
in this fight. He needs to use a large punch output and make B-Hop work and test the stamina in those old legs. If he does that, I expect Dawson to win a unanimous decision. I doubt he's going to stop B-Hop, but if he does, that would be a real wake-up call for B-Hop to really call it quits. I've got a feeling even if B-Hop loses by unanimous decision, he'll keep fighting somehow. Just another thing I just forgot about. Don't be surprised if there's a lot of controversial stuff in this fight either. You know, and I mean B-Hop going down from low blows that didn't seem that low. Or B-Hop falling over when Bad Chad Dawson throws him around the ring again. Don't be surprised if Dawson is penalised for pushing the rules, whereas Hopkins does the football equivalent of simulation. I would not be surprised if that becomes a talking point in the in my post fight video, okay?